We've all heard about haunted houses and families sharing their living spaces with ghosts. But what are these things we call ghosts or poltergeists? If there are people now living on earth but not using bodies, why are they disturbing other people? In this video you will hear the voices of three people speaking from the afterlife who stayed on earth for a short time after leaving their bodies. You're going to hear the ghost side of the story about what they've been doing that frightens people and why they've been doing it. Hello, I'm Dr. R. Craig Hogan, president of the Afterlife Research and Education Institute and Seek Reality Online. When people's bodies die, they continue to live just as though they were living in the body. They're the same person, just without the earth body. Most go immediately into the afterlife, but some stay on the earth plane walking around, riding in cars, going to theaters, and sometimes making things happen in people's homes that give the people a fright. We call them earthbounds because they're not in the body, but they're staying bound to the earth. They might stand in a group of people, but no one takes notice of them because they're not in a body. That can make them very frustrated. Some earthbounds do everything they can to get someone's attention. They may make things move or cause electrical devices to turn on. We call these people who agitate families poltergeists, meaning noisy or mischievous ghosts. In this video, you will hear from three of these people whose bodies have died, but they were still on earth trying to get people's attention. The accounts come from the Leslie Flint Educational Trust archives. Leslie Flint was a direct voice medium in the 20th century. When he sat to connect with people in the afterlife, an ectoplasmic voice box would form on his shoulder. The voice box had vocal cords, tongue, teeth, and lips to produce words. Air flowed over the vocal cords as breathing to produce sound that vibrated the air to create an audible voice. Those sitting with Flint recorded the voices. There are thousands of these audio recordings of people now living in the afterlife speaking as clearly as though they were standing in front of a microphone. The first person who came through in a Leslie Flint session was named Dorcas. Dorcas lived in Scotland in the 18th century. She explains how she remained earthbound for a long time after her tragic death, scaring people as a ghost. Sitting with Flint were George Woods and Betty Green, who asked questions of the people in spirit and ran the tape recorder. You will hear them speak. This is Dorka's account. But at first, I was really earthbound, and I could no sort of find a satisfaction only in being near the earth and the people that I've known. Besides, I was quite happy being earthbound. I enjoyed watching other people and seeing what they were up to and keeping my eye open, you know. Hey, and I used to cause a bit of mischief at times too. I used to play plants. I used to do all sorts of things. I used to get quite a great deal of fun and pleasure out of that. Opening shutting doors and throwing coals and all sorts of things. Breaking mirrors and frightening people out of there. Hey, but what was wrong with that? <laughs> I made them know I was around. <laughs> and they used to say that for old Dockers here again. And they took it for granted and they're not worried so they're not about it either. After a time when they were no more frightened of me, I got a bit fed up with that and I decided to depart. And, uh, <laughs> and how did you get help here? Who helped you? Oh, various people came to help me, but I've no listened to them at first. And then eventually my mother came oh. and she pleaded with me to go away. And I thought, well, I might as well. There's no point in staying here. The second speaker describing how he tried to attract attention after his body had died is the famous French actor Maurice Chevalier. Chevalier was a well-known actor and singer in the 20th century. He transitioned from his body in 1972. In this recording, he describes his frustration that people did not notice him as he wandered unseen through the streets of Paris. Yes, you know, when I was uh, very shortly after I died. Yes. I was a little bewildered about everything and I warned uh, up the Champs Elysees and uh, I was bumping into people and they didn't know and I shout loud as I think no one here and I get very frustrated and I sit at the cafe and then a woman and a man 
Come and sit down very near my table. And I look at them and I, <laughs> I'm curious and they don't seem to know I am there. They have some cafe and they, <laughs> they leave the cups to their lips, you know. Yes. And uh, I, I think, oh, I would like for myself to have some, but it was not possible. No one hear my voice. I speak. I think. No one take notice. Uh, and then I get very cross, and I kick the tables. <laughs> and then I go to the tables where the man and the woman are seated, and I think, now what can I do? I try, I shout, I kick the chair, I kick the man on his leg. He don't take no nurses. I get very cross. And I think, what is all this? I know, I tell that I'm dead. That is what I tell, I understand I am dead, but I don't know why these people don't know I'm dead. I want them to know I'm alive, though I'm dead, you know. Yes. Oh, I do many stupid things. I was up and down in what you call the, the elevator. Yes. I got fed up with it. Uh, up and down, down and up, up and down. People come and stand right in front of me, back of me, and I breathe, as I think, on their necks. <laughs> and they don't take no notice. So one woman says, oh, what a cold breeze strikes me. <laughs> and it was uh, me. <laughs> a physician in the afterlife named Dr. Doherty came through in a Leslie Flint seance in 1965. He explained that after his death, he couldn't accept that he was dead and paced through his old house, banging on things and throwing objects about. The new owners of the house were alarmed at the manifestations, thought it was a poltergeist or a noisy ghost. This is Dr. Dohe's account of what he was doing. Of course, when I came here, I had to change my personality because I couldn't realize I was dead at all. I just couldn't realize that. I was pacing around the house and trying to make people know I was really banging, banging here and there and just picking up the tongues and throwing them down in the fireplace. And they got quite frightened about all this. You know, they really knew what was going on there in this mushroom. They knew that something weird was happening, but they didn't quite understand this, of course, and didn't seem to help me at all. But well, I gave them merry hell for months in that bloody house. <laughs> Nearly all of the hauntings we hear about are people still on the earth plane whose bodies have died and they're still alive. They're just trying to get people's attention. A small source of paranormal activities are entities that have never been human. Those are the ones that might do some harm. But there are very few of them. Your loved ones and you will not be ghosts haunting places. Only a very few people stay on the earth plane after their bodies die out of confusion. If you or a loved one decided to stay on earth for a time, it would be because you were concerned about a loved one who was grieving. You will choose when to go on to the afterlife. For the others, all will finally transition into the life after this life after some time. Mm -hmm.